Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video the title says above is another reading vlog. And I feel like I'm doing these reading vlogs back to back, but you guys are not seeing them back to back. You're seeing them like every other week or at least this one and the previous one I recorded, you're not going to see till February. So yeah, but it is two, um, Thursday, excuse me, December 5th, 1258, so about 1 p.m. And um, I wanted to come on and start another vlog for another arc that I got. And you guys should know if you saw my last reading vlog what it was, but it is the arc for Isaiah's Legacy by Misu Andrews. Oh my god, you guys. You guys don't understand how I'm how excited I am for this book. So, um I'm going to throw the cover up here for you guys right now. But this is actually book 3 in the Prophets and Kings series that she is writing. I'm not sure if this is the third and final book, but um it's book 3 in the Prophet and Kings, but it's the sequel to Isaiah's Daughter, which totally confused me. So, I do have the other two books, so I have Isaiah's daughter here. This one follows the story of the prophet Isaiah if he would have adopted a young girl named Ishma and renamed her Hephziva. I'll put the name on the screen as well as the verse that her name is from so you guys can get an uh, understanding. But um, it's basically following Ishma and the prophet Isaiah if he would have adopted her and renamed her and she would have married um, King Hezekiah. So I love this. This book made me fall in love with King Hezekiah. Um, I loved Hezekiah as a boy. He was such an amazing little boy. Very introverted, but I just, I loved him so much. This book was everything. I had gave this book a five stars. I actually read the ebook first and then bought a physical copy. I have not reread the physical book, which I probably should do that before reading this but i'm not going to what i'm gonna do is read the e-arc now and then when i get my physical copy i will reread the series together but we have this so this is the first book in the prophet and kings series following that we then have a fire and lions by misu andrews of course this one follows um the life of the prophet daniel but it tells the story through the eyes of his wife belle or belly I'll put it on the screen, but it goes through basically the book of Daniel in this book, and it's really, really good. I think I gave this either four or five. I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen what I gave it. Um, I enjoyed it, but I still preferred Isaiah's daughter over this book. And, of course, then we have Isaiah's legacy, which is basically a follow-up to Isaiah's daughter, which I'm so stoked for. My phone just went off. I don't know who texted me. And put my phone on vibrate and um i'm so stoked so i'm going to read the quick synopsis for you guys because i don't really remember all i know is that this follows king manasseh who is the son of hef ziva and king hezekiah and that that's all i know um obviously prophet isaiah should be involved in this i think but we're gonna um read so it says the drama of the old testament comes to life as judah's most notorious king ascends to the throne in this gripping novel from the award-winning author of isaiah's daughter at eight years old, Shule has known only life in the small village with her loving but peculiar father. When Uncle Shebna offers shelter in Jerusalem in exchange for Shule's help tutoring King Manasseh, Judah's five-year-old co-regent who displays the same peculiarities as her father, she's eager to experience the royal court. But Shule soon realizes the limits of her father's strict adherence to Yahweh's law when Uncle Shebna teaches her the starry host and their powers. Okay, he trying to sway her. All right. <laughs> Convinced Judah must be free from Yahweh's chain, she begins the subtle swing of young Manasseh, using her charm and skills on the boy no one else understands. Well, that's harsh. Oh, my God. Okay. When King Hezekiah dies, 12-year-old Manasseh is thrust into Judah's throne, bitter at Yahweh and eager to marry the girl he adores. A serious crown prince favors Manasseh and twists his brilliant mind toward cruelty, beginning Shule's long and harrowing journey to discover the Yahweh she'd never known. Guided with loving wisdom by Manasseh's mother, Isaiah's daughter, the heartbroken Hephziva. Amid Judah's dark days, a desperate remnant emerges, claiming the Lord's promise. Though we're helpless now, we're never hopeless, because we serve El Shaddai. Shule is among them, a girl who becomes a queen through Isaiah's legacy. Oh my gosh, this is going to be exciting. I'm sorry, I, this is like my first time fully, like, full-blown reading the synopsis. All I knew is that it was a sequel to Isaiah's Daughter, and I was sold because I loved Isaiah's Daughter so much. So, I'm not sure if the prophet Isaiah is going to make an appearance. I would assume he does. I just would assume so. Um, 
I'm gonna sneak and look at reviews, but no one is really saying. So I don't know. To mentally prepare for this, I am going to read my review of Isaiah's Daughter um, to prepare my mind mentally for the book. But I'm not probably going to start reading until 2 o'clock because I'm still editing a video and then my son gets out soon. So um, it's 1.03 right now. I'm going to finish editing this video so that I can render it and then begin reading. But I'm super, super excited to read it. I don't have my physical copy at the moment. Um, I am a part of the launch team for Misu's upcoming release, which I'm so stoked for. And I was trying to hold out until my physical copy came because y'all know I like annotating and marking up my books. But they're saying it'll take about a week or another two weeks to get here. Um, and it's December. I'm not messing with the mailman in December. So we just going to be the e-arc now and do that. And then when I do get my physical copy, um, I will then maybe reread it. I guess once I get my physical copy, I'll reread the entire series over, if that makes sense. But I'm so stoked. I can't wait. Um, I'm hoping that I get a little bit more of Hezekiah before he dies because we love Hezekiah. We love him. We love him. Um, he's amazing and I love Hezekiah, of course. So that is that. I just wanted to make this quick intro. When I do start reading, I'll come back on camera. But like I said, I got a video to edit right now. So we're going to edit. We're going to sip on my orange soda. Yes, I have some orange soda in a mug because we love orange soda. Who loves orange soda? Nay loves orange soda. I am thinking about having some tea, though, some stash tea. This acai berry, it's just a herbal tea. Oh, my gosh, I cannot wait to have this. It's, it has hibiscus, rose hips, lemongrass, chicory root, orange peel, licorice root, acai berry, and natural acai flavors. This is just so good. It is so, so, it's so good. I have this one and then this one here. So I have two of those, and then I have the strawberry pomegranate one. Oh, this one has rose. Oh, it's a rooibos tea. So this one is a rooibos tea, and this one is a straight-up red tea. Um, They're both... I said red tea. The acai berry is an herbal tea, straight-up herbal. Um, There's, like, nothing else. And then this one is rooibos, but rooibos is still herbal. But um, rooibos is more of African blended tea. I, I love rooibos. Rooibos, red tea is what they call it, but it's so sweet and so delicious. But this one has rooibos, rose hips, hibiscus, raspberry, pomegranate, and strawberry with citric acid so i want to drink this one but i only have one of these so i'm not gonna drink it yet <laughs> so i'm gonna drink one of these because i do have two so we have that i actually need to find out where i can get the strawberry one but we're gonna have some tea and um yeah i'll come back when i get ready to read i'm super super stoked and i'm, I'm hoping to give this a five star or a 4.5 star like my prayer is a five star read but a 4.5 i can deal with um if it's a four star read i'll kind of be sad because like I definitely have high hopes for this and maybe I shouldn't go into this with high hopes because I did that with Daughter of Rome and I think that's what kind of messed me up. So I'm going to try to go into this without high hopes. But what I am going to do is, like I said, reread my review. So I'm just going on to Goodreads right now. I'm clicking here. Right here. I have read the novella too, so I don't know why I didn't mark it. But as you can see, I read the, th the second book. I read the novellas. I just never marked it. And then I read this. So we're going to click on here. And then what I'm going to do is just quickly read my review before I begin reading. Dang, my review is pretty long. <laughs> I, I write too much, but I love writing, you guys. Oh, my gosh. So I'm going to read my review. And hopefully that should prepare me mentally for the book. So I'll come back when I get ready to read. Hey, guys. So it's December 6, 1036 in the morning. And I'm just getting some administrative work done. I've been up since 7 o'clock, been doing administrative work. And I'm trying to get that done by 12 so that I can spend the rest of my day reading. So my son will be home this weekend. So I won't be able to do as much reading as I normally do on the weekend just because he'll be home. Normally he goes to his father's house on Fridays until either Saturday or Sunday. But um, he'll be home with me this weekend because his dad is going out with his fraternity brothers. So mommy time son time this weekend we're gonna have some mommy son fun his school is having a um movie night so it's like a dollar admission you get cookies and hot chocolates and then they have five dollars to take a picture with santa my son might not do that because he ain't into all that but we're gonna go watch the movie we don't know what movie it is but we're gonna go and then tomorrow is saturday we may just go out to walmart and get stuff so we can finally decorate the tree 
and have another movie night. And then Sunday, he's going to the Christmas party at church. So pretty cool weekend, pretty chill. Hopefully, you know, he'll let me sneak in some reading. So I really need to do as much reading as I can this weekend. Um, well, today, really. So I'm actually going to be knocking out three books. Um, I'll get into Isaiah's Legacy in a second, but I am in spice king the spice king by elizabeth camden with my sis stephanie and um i am currently 10 chapters and i'm just getting to chapter 11 and it's it's cute um i'm enjoying it it's very different from what i'm used to reading but i'm enjoying the writing style um i'm enjoying the characters gray and annabelle are some interesting characters as well as luke who's gray's brother elaine who is um annabelle's sister and then you have caroline who's luke's twin sister and they're both the sister and brother of Grey. Grey is very much a character that just likes to, um, he takes on a lot. Takes on the father role and, um, it has to do with the death of his father and his relationship with his father. So, so far I'm really enjoying this and I think the romance is kind of cute. But I'm a little afraid because of something that just happened that Annabelle is going to be partaking in that has me a little afraid. So, but I'm enjoying it. Um, doing my catch up of Redeeming Love, thank God. So I have to be at chapter 26, um, because this Sunday coming up, we'll be reading chapter 27 to, I believe, 29. So I'm playing catch up. I am at chapter, oh my gosh, what chapter is this? I'm at chapter 22. So I have about four or five chapters to read, um, until I get there. So that works out. I have to make sure I read that before Sunday. Um, I have been marking, but I haven't added my tabs in yet. So, uh, I don't know if I can find a page where I marked it up. Here we go. Here's a page where I've, I like marked it up, but I haven't included my tabs yet. So I have a lot of tabs to include. So I'm going to be playing catch up with that, but I am listening to the audiobook, which is taking a little bit longer. I have the audiobook playing on three times speed. I read faster than they read it on three times speed. So yeah, that tells you how quickly I read. Um, but yeah, so let's get back into this, 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 this here, this, this, oh Jesus, my God. I have no words. Um, I'm on chapter 8. I'm 15% of the way through, so chapter 8 in Isaiah's Legacy. And um, just, first of all, Manasseh reminds me of Hezekiah when he was younger from um, Isaiah's daughter when he didn't really communicate with people. And what's her name? Shuli kind of reminds me of Ishma, a.k.a. Zeba. Um, but I don't like Shebna. Yo, Shebna is annoying. Oh my god. He's so frustrating. He's frustrating me so much because of the stupidity and the things that he's doing. There's um this girl girl named Be Belly Belly Bellily. I don't know how to write. I don't I don't. What is her name? Oh my god! Sudden so irritate me. I need to figure out her name. Hold on. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to continue until I remember her name because she is oh she's a wicked witch, literally in every sense. Um, what is her name? I need to figure out her name. So I'm just I'm going to my highlights to get her name because I need to tell you guys her name. Her oh she's annoying go okay well i'll come to okay here we go um bell it bell 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 it bell it yeah b-e-l-i-t bell it but oh she is a wicked woman and shebna is a fool they are basically teaching dark arts dark magic and um worshiping the different gods to Shule and they threatened her basically by causing her father to be ill um he woke up one night with his beard and his hair cut off and he had um sores all over his body so they basically are using her father as a hostage in a sense and she's been learning all this dark magic and she is like she knows it's wrong, but she also feels like Yahweh is not the only God because she has witnessed what these gods have done to her father. And they're teaching her this so that when she goes to teach Manasseh, she can sway him from God to the other gods. And it's like, bruh, it's heartbreaking. And then there was a scene where they took her to the grove. <sighs> And they forced her to have sex with two noblemen um, for her goddess. And the goddess she was supposed to worship was Ashra, whatever the goddess is. It's the same goddess that was mentioned in um, Connie Lynn's, um, what's the series? Out from Egypt series, the goddess of, uh, is it 
the one where they have sex with her and they they have sex to worship her that goddess can't remember her name um it's ashwatir or something like that but um she felt humiliated and disgusting so she decided to pick ishtar as a goddess which is a goddess of love and war um but it's just so heartbreaking because it's like her uncle is he doesn't care he's just like oh it'd be easier and you'll find pleasure in it soon like bruh no just oh i don't like shepna i don't like him hezekiah and ziva i love them so much they just have a, a place in my heart i adore them together um i'm gonna need isaiah to stop playing and get to these scriptures on them because <sighs> things about to, i feel like things are about to go left field there was a scene that made me mad but it also made me laugh at the same time because um manasseh i believe he's nine years old now and he walked in on his parents kissing and, you know, showing affection and whatnot. Not having sex, but, like, kissing. So his father was like, well, that's how you show your love to a girl. So he is attracted to Shule. Or, rather, he likes her. She's very friendly and he she understands him. Um, so, wow, my light is flickering like that. I don't know if that's happening on camera. But, yeah, he had kissed her. And everybody was shook, like, bro what like you're not supposed to do that and he was like well you guys told me that that's how you show your love for um a woman and i love her bro you're nine years old he's like well i'm a king so that makes me a man bro you're nine years old what so then he was like yeah well who do i go to to learn about loving a woman basically having sex i'm just like yo he's nine ain't nobody about to say nothing to this little boy like nobody and then you have shule who's being trained basically to seduce the, the the young king and sway him into you know being a pagan and it's just like oh, i'm not ready and then it's close to the time that hezekiah has to die so i'm not ready for that and it's going to be just oh, heart-wrenching to read so i'm enjoying it off just off of seven chapters five stars <laughs> like it is definitely a little bit of a darker read um because you definitely get hints of those drastic moments i mean that scene with shule just mm -mm, I, I didn't care for it um only because it hit home for me so it's definitely hitting some chords some some heartstrings but i'm loving it five stars already and like i said i'm only 15 percent of the way through so i'm hoping to get to at least 50 percent today Fingers crossed. I'm hoping to get to the last five chapters that I need to read in this book, which is not going to be hard because I'm listening to the audiobook. And again, it's a reread. Um, I think once I read those chapters, then I'll go back and add all my tabs because it feels so naked without the tabs. And this book here, The Spice King, I have to read up to chapter... Chapter 23. So 11 to 22 um, is for today. So 11 chapters today. So that is the goal. I'm still doing some work. I'm rendering a video right now, doing administrative work, watching YouTube videos and whatnot. So yes, long day, long day. Um, but I'm excited for the day. I'm excited for the week when we can with my son and things like that. So I'm actually not going to read Redeeming Love until later because it's a reread. So that's not like a immediate priority. So I can put that on my Heart. but that's it for today and i'll come back with my thoughts if i get to any of the reading that i need to do today morning guys so today is monday december 9th it's been a minute since i last came on and updated it's currently 8 49 a.m and um i am 50 percent of the way through on this book and it's been hard for me to come on and vlog just because this book is so like <laughs> oh it's intense i'm on chapter 27 there are a total of 50 59 if you include the epilogue is there a prologue as well yeah so there's total total of 60 chapters um so i'm 50 percent of the way through and ooh, my feels i thought hezekiah was crazy but his son manasseh he's crazy and if you guys hear my brother it's okay he's in the other side of the, on the other side of the living room playing his game right now but um Yo, my feelings so far, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to feel. Like, definitely five star vibes. Um, I got five star vibes once I hit like twenty seven percent, and then thirty five percent, and then forty eight at fifty percent, still five stars. Um, I think this is definitely gonna be five stars. I am not liking Shebna. I cannot stand Shuli or Shule or whatever her name is. 
um, Hezekiah has died and the way he died was so unexpected 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 and um, it threw me for a loop like I had to read that scene three times because I was so confused on how he just like died like that like I didn't I'm gonna have to definitely read in the Bible to make like to see if this is literally how he died because if this is literally how he died I'm just it was so unexpected um, the way it happened and I feel so bad for poor Manasseh because he's like <sighs> baby boy has some some serious issues like some serious issues and um I don't I don't know I love Ziba she's amazing I am fearing for Hezekiah I mean not Hezekiah for Isaiah because he's gonna be dying next I already know this um right now they're in Babylon Manasseh went to Babylon with um Shulay, he made Shulay his one. Like, there's a whole lot that I wish I would have vlogged during the course, but I'm definitely gonna reread the book when I get the physical copy and do like a full blown reading vlog. But I definitely wanted to record my initial experience reading it, which kind of failed because it's been a couple days <laughs> since reading. But even then, I read little bit by little bit because it's so, it's so good yet it's so heavy. Like Isaiah's daughter was heavy. But it wasn't as dark and this book is definitely has more of a darker aspect you're definitely seeing more violence um but again the bible if you read the bible or if you read the bible i read um the old testament is very even the new testament is very gruesome gritty you know they're slaughtering people they're killing people they're cutting off heads like this this was like normal back then um, and it's not like what you see now on the news. It was worse back then. <laughs> so like to read it in a biblical fiction, you're just like, what? Like Isaiah had given um, Manasseh a kitten because him and Manasseh have some like issues going on, right? Like there's a lot of family issues going on right now ever since um, Hezekiah got sick because um, he's allowing Shule and Shebna to teach him the dark ways. Um, dark arts, I think is what it's called. And it's just, it's not cool. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Let me drink some of my coffee. And, um, I have my Starbucks, <laughs> so you guys are gonna laugh. So I have my Starbucks, um, white chocolate double shot espresso in here, but this is like my Dunkin' Donuts coffee traveling mug. So yeah. And then I have two bagels. Well, I have one bagel, the small bagels. One half has regular cream cheese. This one is brown sugar and cinnamon green cheese, which is really good. But... I'm like, and I just want to show you guys, like, you guys, I'm 50% of the way through, and I'm in the middle of chapter 27, and it's just like, I don't know how to feel, like, but yeah, um, Isaiah had given Manasseh a, a cat, well, this was after he slapped him, because he slapped the dog mess out of Manasseh, keep in mind, Manasseh, I think, is 12 years old, so he's a king, and he's still a little boy, but he also has, like, these these um these problems where he can't be around people too much I, he it's almost like he's autistic in a sense um and then he's very angry and bitter towards god um and because he's allowing shule and shebna and bellet to i don't know how to explain it's i'm definitely gonna say read the book it's a good read. Um, I'm loving it so far, but it's so heavy that I have to take it in increments. It's a lot heavier. I'm sorry, the heat is about to come on. You might hear it. So I'm going to um, come back to you guys and talk more after the heat goes off because it's starting up. So, yeah, we just going to you, watch me read. So I'm on the other side of the living room. My living room has like two parts. There's this small side and then the larger side over there. Oh, over there. Yeah. So I'm going to sit, eat and read some more. I'm going to try to make it to 30 and yeah, let's go.
Okay, guys, I'm 50%, 58% of the way through, and I'm really about to start crying. Okay. I'm trying to, like, bring my emotions, because this book is, like, crazy right now. And again, if you hear my brother, I apologize. But they're in um, Nineveh. We all know about Nineveh from Jonah. Um, and a lot of things have been revealed so he did take Gimmit or whatever her name is as a wife she's Babylonian um, by King or Prince Esar and he just had a evening planned with his wife but things went completely left because people tried to kill her and he sent her a letter so again if you remember whether I apologize but he sent her a letter and I'm, I'm actually gonna mark the letter but it starts here and goes to here and basically in the letter he's basically saying we can't be together we have to be separated we can only be seen in public ceremonies and maintain a distance that suggests strife between us until prince Esar inherits his father's throne because the king which is Sena Sena Sharif I'll put it on the screen but um he's being a douchebag and his sons are terrible and they're trying to basically get rid of people but also in that we find out that Panya who was I believe the Egyptian I believe she was the Egyptian wife um, or the Egyptian concubine she killed herself because she was the first one to get pregnant so she was the first one to get pregnant and um, her and Shule were actually like cool friends they really helped each other a lot Panya ended up pregnant but she gave birth to a girl and because Manasseh's in um, Babylon or Nineveh or whatever he had to give up his firstborn daughter to one of King Sin's sons as like a concubine but she's like a newborn baby so Panya was like I guess upset and decided to kill herself and she poisoned herself with Olander and then they also gave away um three of his other concubines because I think he had about eight concubines or something like that every city he visited they, he had a concubine um so he gave up three of them because Princess Sar is being a douchebag about him having a baby with Gimitai and it's just, it's gutting my heart like Isaiah's daughter I cried probably once this one I feel like I feel like I'm about to cry right now like because it's and the crazy thing is before they went on this journey they're on a year-long journey to go visit a bunch of locations that they should not be in Zeba had told um Chule to not let Manasseh go to Babylon she warned her and now you're seeing the repercussions of him going to Babylon and it's just like <laughs> I'm not ready for anything else to happen I'm 58% of the way through and I like I want to finish this book today but I'm just I, I can't like my eyes oh my gosh this is like really emotional right now like I kind of like Panya and I like the other women. And then we find out that um, Prince Esar's mother, Queen Nika, Nika, what's her name? Nikia? Nika? I'll put her name on the screen, but um, she's part Hebrew, which is insane. Like, I didn't know. And then there was a scene where she was talking to one of her um, maids that was given to her as like a slave. And she reveals that, you know, the only true God is Yahweh. It was like, oh my God, it's just like, I'm, I'm being gutted. So I'm going to just, <laughs> I need to finish this chapter. Okay, so I'm going to finish this chapter and then I'll be at chapter 30. But I'm, I'm going to read this right now. Then she's like, I suspected my imprisonment in Nineveh had been motivated by Nessa's desire to protect me. But he had now imposed an enduring banishment beyond repel. Like, bruh, that's not love. Alright, so chapter 30. Chapter 30, I, I can't, I, I can't deal, 59% of the way through, I, I can't deal, I'm over it, um, Misu, you're, you're gutting me, you're, like, Isaiah's daughter was amazing, 
but Isaiah's legacy. <laughs> and then we don't even know what's going on back in um, Jerusalem with Ziba and Isaiah, which I think... Oh no, okay, so this follows... Chapter 30 takes place two years after Hezekiah's death. So they had their trip. Okay, so I really didn't want to read, but I read the first paragraph, and it says, Gimitai, who is the Babylonian wife, groaned in her sleep and rode over, taking most of Nessa's bed covers. She was beautiful, but she wasn't too late, and her breath stank of onions and garlic. <laughs> oh my god, I can't, yo. Just five stars. I'm, but five stars. I can't. I have to I have to mark that in yellow. That's funny. I can't wait to get my physical copy. So I marked that part in yellow. He said she was beautiful, but she wasn't shoe and her breath stank of onions and garlic. <laughs> See, as much as I, I can't stand Nessa for what he's doing, I also understand that he's still a little boy. Um he was twelve or eleven when his father died. So now he's about fourteen, fifteen years old. Um so it's just like He's 13, 14 years old, because I think he was like 11, 12, yeah. So he's about 13, anywhere between 13 and 15 right now, two years later. And um, it's it's sad having to see a little boy have to grow up so quickly. Um, I don't know, it's just like, I don't know how to feel. I don't know, you guys. I'm, I'm loving it. It's emotional. It's heart-wrenching. It's gripping. It's gruesome it's bloody it's dark this is definitely dark so if you're not into dark biblical fiction don't read this because it's definitely it gets dark um it's, i i still recommend you read the book because it's so good the writing is so good and it brings the old testament to life which is my biggest thing why i like biblical fiction because it brings the old testament to life for me i read new testament biblical fiction and i'm not super fond of it I prefer Old Testament biblical fiction just because I find the Old Testament in the Bible is hard for me to comprehend sometimes. So reading biblical fiction brings it to life. But I'm gonna be I'm gonna go because I'm over it right now. So I'll come back later when I decide to read more. So yeah. Hey guys, so I'm back. Sorry if the camera's shaking, but it's still the ninth. Um, it's currently 5:17 in the evening. I'm just finishing up dinner right now, but I'm gonna come back and do some more reading. Um, I did read chapter 30 earlier and. I just can't do it right now. Um, I made me some tea. This tea is called Cherry Amour. It's an herbal tea and it's from a company called Tea Forte. I had purchased, a, um, well not purchased, I was gifted a bunch of teas from them about a year ago or two years ago. I can't remember. So I'm trying this one out. I have it in my little Tea Forte teacup. So I threw in two packs. And it's loose leaf tea. Um, so I threw in two packs of that. And... It smells like cherries with cinnamon, and I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. Like cherry, cinnamon, licorice, and something else. I don't know exactly, you know, what's in it, because it doesn't say... It came in a box with other teas, um, but this is one pack that's apparently good for 12 ounces. I just do 8 ounces of water. That's all I do. So I have my cup, which is this one that I got from my sis Angela over at Sisters and Pearls. She got this for me for my birthday, which was so awesome. Um, it just says Psalms 20 and 4 on it. I have some sugar inside. Can y'all see the sugar? We need sugar. Um, and I'm making this intro portion because my mom is literally like, she should be walking through the door soon. So that's why I'm doing it. But yeah, we're going to pour a little bit of tea. This might be a major fail. It might um, spill. Hopefully it does not. We're going to try. Okay, here we go. Yes, there we go. Oh, that looks like it's going to taste good. Okay, oh, there we go. So, have some tea, piping hot tea, stir up the sugar. And we're going to get back into this. But uh, the last time I stopped that stopped talking was when I was cracking up at what um, Manessa had said about Gimitai's <laughs> breath stinking, which I thought was funny. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, Gimitai is pissing me off. She's very much trying to be like this macho macho girl, which is like, if you don't sit your little behind down somewhere, he straight up put her in a chokehold <laughs> um, in chapter 30. I was like, ooh, better stop before he kill you. Um, he's definitely dealing with his emotions 
in a horrible way. He's kind of like keeping his emotions inside. He feels resentful inside about Panya dying and giving up his firstborn. But, I mean, he's putting on this kind of show and it's just annoying. He's back home in Jerusalem, though. He did see his family and his friends and all that. Um, so, I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel. It's definitely a five star. I'm at 60%. Um, let me show you guys 60% you guys can see that right there six zero sixty percent But I'm loving it. It's amazing. Let me try this tea. I haven't tried their tea in a minute, but oh My god That is sweet mm -mm. We need more I'm gonna pour a little bit more in my cup because that is delicious. Oh my gosh I'm literally just pouring as much as I can into my cup. Okay there we go. This tea is delicious. I Like I said, I haven't had their tea in a minute. It's been a while. But yeah, I'm just going to record myself reading. Um, hopefully I can finish it tonight because I've been reading this book since the second or was it the third? I don't know. Would that, no, maybe it was the fifth I started reading. And I think I said I wanted to be done today. So we'll see. Um, so good. This is our herbal tea. There's no like green tea leaves, brown, brown. <laughs> there's no green, black, or white tea leaves, and this is straight up herbal. You guys can see organic herbal tea. I didn't want anything with caffeine because I will be having coffee later. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna get back to reading. You guys can watch me read, and um, yeah, let's dive in.
Okay, guys, so I have to come in my bedroom. It is currently 10.31. 10.31 p.m., December 9th. I'm done. Like, there's, like, there's just, there's nothing else. There's just the author's note, which I'm probably going to read through that, or I'll probably just wait till I get the physical copy, but... No words. Um, beautiful. <laughs> just, just I, I have no words. Um, I think I'm going to do. Um, there might be a book look makeup tutorial discussion video because I got feels. I, I don't know how to feel. Oh my god, like I'm gonna update my reading journal right now. I don't I, I don't know how to feel guys, like I'm <laughs> mind blown right now this ended so beautifully it was it it pulled in my heart if you guys would have saw me reacting while i was reading because so much stuff was like happening back to back to back this was epic it was such a perfect follow-up to isaiah's daughter i cannot wait to reread this book <laughs> i can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it i definitely would say you must read Isaiah's Daughter to get a full grasp and understanding of Isaiah's legacy because it is a follow-up of things that took place in Isaiah's Daughter. Um, just wow. I, I have no words. So to end my night, I'm going to pick up Redeeming Love. Um, I finally caught up on my reading with this. So, um, I'm probably just going to finish the rest of these last few pages tonight. Six page, six chapters left. I'm probably going to finish that because I'm mind blown. Like, Misu did that. I'm just going to update my reading. I finished both of these books. This was a really good book. Um, I gave that a three star. So, I'm just going to update both my readings for this evening and then work on my reviews. But... Five stars all the way. Um, definitely. <laughs> I don't know how to feel. Like, <laughs> I have no words. Nessa, even though he pissed me off with what he did, he had such a pure heart. Um, and it was really clouded by the adults around him, like Shebna. Shule just <sighs> I, I'm gonna end this vlog here it was perfect that's perfection read it book reviews coming like I said before the release of this book you should have seen my book to look uh, makeup tutorial on this I, I have no words no words I'm stunned I'm just perfection um, so I, I keep saying perfection because I, I literally like have no words to express what I'm feeling. Like none whatsoever. I'm just updating also on my, my DOI Goodreads. But I, 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 I. This was epic. <laughs> And we love Zeba. Of course, she does die towards the end. Obviously, she like has to. But I'm, I'm mind blown. I'm gonna have to. T I really should just take a minute and not read. But I'm gonna pick up Redeeming Love to give me some cute feels right now because I can't do. Go go get a copy of the book. <laughs> I'm going to end this here. It's 10.35. I'm going to spend the next hour 
reading the last six chapters and listening to Redeeming Love on audiobook. And um we're just we're just gonna end my night like that. So thank you guys for watching this reading vlog. I'll I'll see y'all in the next one. And if you guys hear my son, he's snoring and sleeping. So I'll catch you guys in the next video.